Many people who avoid sugar or gluten in their diet for health or dietary reasons avoid whiskey. But is there sugar or gluten in whiskey? If you want to find out, then stick around. So let's start off with sugar. Is there sugar in whiskey? Eh, no, but yes, like a tiny, tiny trace amount. Something like 44 one thousandths of one gram of sugar in the standard one and a half ounce pour on average. Uh, definitely considered sugar free by any food standard. So whiskey is basically sugar free and that's because the fermentation process which causes the sugar that was originally in the grain to be converted into ethanol, the yeast eat most of the sugar. And if the fermentation process goes as planned, there's not gonna be any residual sugar left after fermentation. Uh, but what the yeast don't get, distillation will take care of because sugar as a compound is too heavy uh, and does not uh, evaporate at the same temperature that it would need to for it to be able to pass from one side to the other on the still. Because remember, distillation is purification based on boiling point. And so if there were any residual sugar left, the still would leave it in the spent mash uh, at the end of the, the uh, distillation process and it could not make its way over into your whiskey. Uh, so where did that little tiny trace amount come from? It's probably being extracted by the whiskey as it ages in the barrel. Because even though we don't think of oak trees as being a good source of sugar, there are tiny trace amounts of sugar in the oak and the whiskey does penetrate and pull compounds out of the, the oak. So I'm guessing that most of that tiny amount of sugar is coming from the wood uh, during the aging process. And so people say, well, then why is whiskey so sweet? Well, uh, there are a lot of flavor compounds that are created during the fermentation process that are retained during the distillation process. And those compounds are generally referred to as congeners, uh, but they uh, will add sweeter flavors. There's one called vanillin that makes whiskey taste like vanilla. There's flavor compounds that taste like different fruit flavors, um, so on and so forth. And so that is, you're actually tasting a compound that is familiar to you and it is a sweet taste, but your body does not metabolize congeners. So it's not like it's, it's treating it like sugar and it's converting it into energy and your body has to get rid of it. Now let's talk about gluten. Uh, gluten uh, is a general category of proteins that are found in um, like wheat, rye, barley, and some other cereal grains. And it mostly acts as a binder that holds the food together. And due to genetic modification of crops here in the United States, there's been an explosion of individuals that are allergic to gluten, including my wife, Lindsay. Um, but like sugar, gluten is too large of a compound for it to pass the still. And so uh, if, if you're talking about a distilled spirit, uh, by its nature, it cannot have sugar and it cannot have any gluten in it. But that doesn't mean that all whiskeys are safe for you to drink if you're avoiding sugar or gluten um, because of the manufacturing standards for the different categories of whiskey. So uh, the, the easiest category would be a straight whiskey. So if it says straight bourbon or straight rye, uh, straight wheat, something like that. Um, or if it says bottled in bond, which is an even more restrictive class of whiskey, uh, the manufacturing standards for that uh, allow for zero additives. And so you, you can trust that if it is a straight whiskey or a bottled in bond manufactured in the United States and you are worried about gluten or sugar, you have no problems with those whiskeys. Now the next category we're going to talk about is the finished whiskey. And it used to be that you had to move uh, your classification from either bourbon or rye or whatever the case may be to a generic class whenever you put the whiskey in a second barrel uh, after you finish the aging process. Usually you would put it in like a rum barrel or a wine barrel or a sherry barrel or something that's going to impart some additional flavor to the whiskey. Um, now, once you move into the finish category, especially if the person who registered that whiskey put it into the generic class, you have no idea what's in it. They could be adding things to it that would uh, have sugar in it, and they could be adding things that um, could potentially have gluten in it. 
But if you're getting a legitimate finished product and it tells you that it's finished in a barrel and you're not worried about the contents of that original barrel, you probably should be safe. Now the next category is blended whiskeys. And there's several different types of blended whiskey in the United States. But if you're worried about sugar and you're worried about gluten, I'm gonna tell you to stay away from blended whiskeys altogether. Um, that is a scenario where the manufacturer is taking some whiskey and potentially some neutral spirit and then other flavorings and colorings and additives. And we really don't know what is in there. My wife personally has had a gluten response from Crown Royal, which is a blended whiskey from Canada. Um, I don't know what they could be putting into it, but it does make her sick. Um, so blended whiskeys, I'm going to tell you, be very careful, probably stay away from them. There is one category called blend of straight. And that is when a company is taking all straight whiskeys and they're blending them together, but maybe one of the barrels was from a different state than the others. And then you have to put it in the blend of straight category. Uh, but if you read the back label and there's anything in there that wasn't just a straight whiskey that went into that blend, you're probably gonna wanna avoid it. And then the last category would be spirit whiskey. Spirit whiskey is like a blended whiskey, but it has even less real whiskey in it, five to 20% whiskey in spirit whiskey. Um, the biggest example of that, I think, is Rebecca Creek um, from Texas is a spirit whiskey. So it's mostly what's effectively vodka with flavorings. Um, and once you start blending in all those extra flavorings and whatnot, just like the, the blended category, we're probably going to avoid those if you want to be careful about your sugar and your gluten. So I hope this content was uh, useful for you. We would love it if you would like, subscribe. Um, after you subscribe, there's a bell for you to click. And that will tell YouTube that you want to be notified when new videos are posted. Um, we'd love it if you would comment below. And if you like the content, share it with your other whiskey-loving friends. And we are going to start doing lots of giveaways here on the Bourbon Real Talk channel. So you're going to want to tune in every single time we post a video. And for this video, we are going to be giving away a Remus single barrel. So this is a single barrel from what's now the Ross and Squibb Distillery. They own the brand Remus. So this is MGP um, liquid. It's a bourbon. And I uh, was personally part of the pick team that picked this. And uh, the reason why we made this tater sticker, so on the back, photo from the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio uh, from The Great Gatsby. And Remus, the real man that's on the front label, uh, was part of the inspiration for the character, The Great Gatsby. And so that's why we made this tater sticker. But this is going to be absolutely for free. Uh, but if you want to win it, there are some rules. We need you to obviously have watched this video. We need you to fill out the link that's in the video description below saying that you want to enter for the free giveaway. We need you to subscribe to the channel or make sure that you're already subscribed. We need you to like the video. Uh, and we need you to comment and potentially even share. Of course, we're not going to know if you shared it, but we sure hope that you do. Um, and now it's time for the shameless real estate plug. So uh, we get a lot of support from our Patreon members. Um, we uh, help support the podcast with our merch on the Bourbon Real Talk website. Uh, but I'm also a real estate agent. So if you are in need of real estate services in the Dallas or Houston metro areas in Texas, please hit me up. And um, as always, we love you guys and we thank you for tuning in.